Um, welcome back after the break. Um, you're he here correctly right if you want something to hear about Cloud Foundry. Um, I see a little change of the people here sitting. Some are the same, some are others. Um, now I'm talking a second time about our service broker framework. Um, there was another talk um, today at 2 o'clock, um, which has a little different uh, kind of uh, focus. Um, some slides are the same um, at the beginning, and then we're switching over to the, another uh, theme because we start at the same idea uh, from, uh, from this thing. Um, my name is Christian um, Brinker. I'm from Evoila. We are a cloud consulting, cloud software company from Germany, uh, Cloud Foundry Silver member, and uh, my colleague Sebastian is ill at home. I hope he gets well. Um, and what we are talking about, what I'm talking about now, is about um, how to provide access to services, which are um, brought to you by a service broker um, using a trick with a H -pro a proxy and uh, floating IPs. Um, what's the problem? So start here. Um, the ones who were to, um, here at the um, other session do already know this slide with Bob. And Bob has this cool application, and Bob wants to. Um, put his application on Cloud Foundry. Um, who in the room did not use Cloud Foundry already or doesn't, don't have a clue? So we can skip the next slides perfectly. If you're interested in Cloud Foundry and so on, you can go back um, in the uh, video from the first talk um, or one of the others here today. Um, so Bob wants his database. Uh, access and he gets it with a service broker. We have heard something about the Brooklyn service broker. We heard something about the, our service broker framework today. Um, but the service here, this database, he works on it with his application. And then he runs into uh, some failure. He uh, don't have a clue. So he wants some access to it on some way to um, directly debug some errors here. Um, but that's only, uh, not only going through, through databases, maybe for all that things here on the right he's using. Um, so if you recall, we have an, uh, our cloud application on Cloud Foundry. We have our service, and it's um, put there on some servicers. We have this lifecycle ongoing um, between our user, Cloud Foundry, the service broker, and its backend. Um, like Brooklyn or uh, like uh, Heat or whatever. So um, we have this different kind of, of services, managed services, user provided, um, bindable, not bindable, router services, syslog drains, volume services. And they all have the same interaction. So you create a service broker, the catalog gets fetched, you can get it accessible in the marketplace, then you create your service instance and it's there, and then the interesting point is you create service bindings for the access. So you get credentials back from the service broker to the cloud controller and the application. But that's for the application, it's in the application environment. If you delete that application, that information is gone. So you haven't, have no possibility to access the database because the access is binded to the application. And that's only in the network of the application. We see that later on. One little uh, advertisement. We are uh, having a framework for this uh, cool stuff here, uh, implementing the whole uh, workflow here. It's uh, developed in Java. I've talked about a little bit in the other slot. Um, the blue things are the, the implemented of the framework, and the rest you can exchange. Um, some configuration stuff, but that's here. We want to access our service. So that's called in, in Cloud Foundry the service key management. So Bob has his service, and he wants direct access. With his alt, uh, uh, workflow that doesn't work. So the change is here that Bob is the one who's getting the access. 
the exchange in for Bob is two other uh, commands in the CFCLI. So he, instead of creating a service binding, he creates a service key, which he can address a name to, which is uh, intensely, it's uh, the same as he has a service uh, binding. It's the same object, it's the same credentials, but the use case is a little bit different because instead of the application being in the, um, in the private network where the host and the Cloud Foundry environment is and so on, uh, Bob isn't in that private network. So if Bob wants direct access to the, to the service instance, it has to be in the internet, accessible, which isn't that cool stuff. So what you really want to do is, uh, I've to, to, the workflow here is the same like here, um, only a little bit different because Bob is going into the Cloud Foundry, you get the service instance created, you get your service binding information from here, it goes, it's got back the information that the user and so on is created with the IP address and so on, got back to the Cloud Foundry and from there on to, to Bob provided. And then Bob gets direct access, but the service instance is in the internet. So what you want is this. Yeah, the service instance is encapsulated in your private network. Um, the service broker uh, is in the private network. No one can access both from outside from the internet, and Bob has only has some interaction with it. Um, but somehow he has to access the database. And that's um, when we got uh, this little change here. <laughs> So looks at the first place, looks a little bit uh, much. I hope you can read it. I see the writing is a little bit uh, sh small from, behind, from there behind. Um, we have several components here. And the first thing is we uh, put a HA proxy into the internet because that's something uh, well known. Many people can uh, have uh, the uh, knowledge about uh, the configuration of it and uh, you can use it for, for scaling things, you can use it for uh, H, uh, high availability, you can make sanity checks and so on. Um, but the problem with the HA proxy here is uh, how does the service broker communicate with it? How can he uh, reconfigure it? So we do not need um, one HA proxy per service instance. So we can use one HA proxy for all our services because Bob only wants to debug, he wants, do not want to make a, a large impact on the database to, to run through batch jobs or something with big lot, but, but only wants to look after the data. So, um, one, we want to do it with one floating IP for the internet and one HA proxy, for example. So, um, we, inter we install some agent into the HA proxy server because the HA proxy at itself doesn't provide a rich API for reconfiguration from the network. So this is a little uh, program written in Python um, which connects to RabbitMQ um, for the information, oh, you have to get a new configuration for the HA proxy from somewhere. And that is done. Uh, is uh, produced by the uh, HA proxy backend we wrote, um, which is called by the service broker um, when you want a service key. When the service key is um, asked for, the service broker makes this whole thing with a service instance, hey, make a user, uh, what, uh, looks up the IP address from the service instance, and then Gets, this gets the IP address to the HA proxy backend and saying here, I want some public accessibility for that IP address. The HA proxy backend knows the configuration of the HA proxy because it started somewhere and then makes some reconfiguration of it because it adds some, listening, some port binding or something and um, gets the HA proxy uh, agent to know, hey, there's a new configuration, and it gets it from here. Why this complicated setup? If we look at a production environment, we have many services, we have many service brokers maybe, 
and we have maybe many users on it. And some users may make different accessibilities at the same time, um, requesting uh, service keys at the same time. So we have the problem that the uh, HA proxy has to be reconfigured from different ways or all the same time. So if we get the information, hey, agent, get your new configuration for the HA proxy, you get the actual one, not that one in between. He gets the state from that uh, point of time, but does not have to expose some uh, external uh, API. Because the HA proxy agent thing here does not expose some endpoint outwards. So it's, there's no attack point. Because all connection is done actively by the HA proxy agent to the RabbitMQ. What does it mean? If we go to our, uh, to our HA proxy config, we have, for example, some, uh, we want to have a cluster of a database with three nodes. We have the possibility to, uh, to address each node with a binding of a public port to our private IP address, private port. So we get that three nodes differently accessible. Once set up, you will see that's not the typical HA proxy database configuration you see all over the internet. Because what was our idea behind it? He wants to debug the cluster, which means no failover interesting from the connection of the service broker, but getting to know what that uh, uh, single node does. So we have to provide an access um, directly to the node. Um, for that, we have to some knowledge about the reconfiguration, the providing of, of options to that. Um, but we have also other setups, interests, maybe uh, the, the connection to our database is not for debug purposes, but we have some application in some other private network which is not directly accessible from our, for our Cloud Foundry internal network, but that application has also to be able to connect to that database. We have no other way but proxying through from one network to another because the problem is if, your applica if you make it by ro router or something, you have that wide open uh, channel from th that network to another, open for, uh, for some assaults from that network to the Cloud Foundry environment. So maybe that's not that kind of coolness you want to, do, uh, to introduce to your uh, production environment. So you um, maybe want to uh, only be, uh, make some failover uh, configuration of your, uh, uh, of your HA proxy and by that made it accessible through the other network. And here, maybe introducing some um, access control list, um, making you some uh, uh, IP sub-address constraints, so only uh, your application node, which uh, has your application in some uh, OpenStack tenant, is able to connect to your database and nothing else. Maybe if, you, you, if your service you're providing is a, some kind of HTTP or HTTPS um, service, you even can control other things like sub-address, paths, and make their segregation. So one, if, for example, if you have an Elasticsearch cluster, you have as, as a REST endpoint each, um, each separation of data. So you have your, uh, your document list, in your, uh, you have an, uh, in, some, uh, in some collection of data you have there and you have another one. And there are some different REST endpoints behind an HTTP uh, endpoint. And what you want maybe is making that accessible but not the rest. You have this distinct uh, endpoint you want to be accessible. And with, an, 
with this HA proxy config thing, you can make only this accessible to the other network. So you have a really distinct, small, accessible point, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, can uh, canalized through the router, through the other network. So, if we jump back, we have this th um, to get uh, what's also the problem here is, um, you see one service broker, four components which have to be introduced to your, uh, to your stack, to your implementation, but that's the only thing which is, uh, which is special for that service. So you can reuse your HA proxy backend and your HA proxy for different service brokers. So you can have a whole bunch of service brokers using the, the same HA proxy backend and using the same HA proxy. So you can manage different services going through from another network. And why that RabbitMQ we see later on. Um, jump back. Our benefits from that uh, setup, we have access control list for optimizing your connection protocol for several restrictions like IP subnets and so on, where you can make sanity checks. Um, like we've done here, this line here in that configuration makes clear that a connection to the database made through the HA proxy is always correct because the connection to that node is tested before the connection is established through the HA proxy. Um, because the HA proxy has some user which is a only able to make a connection but nothing else to the database. This has to be introduced to your service instance provisioning that the role is there, but then you have made a connection through to the HA proxy. It gets sanity check that the node is healthy, it wants to provide to you, and then makes you a tunnel through the HA proxy to the database node, which is really there, not some failover mechanism needed at the, um, at the client, because the HA proxy is a failover a proxy for load balancing purposes. Um, you have no direct access to the database, so if you uh, run a, for example, a, a DDoS attack against the HA proxy IP address, the database isn't really caring about it because if the HA proxy goes down, the database is healthy, your application connecting to the HA proxy is healthy, your Cloud Foundry instance is healthy because it has another uh, IP address has other load balancers and so on. So the, the complete stack isn't corrupted by a DDoS attack against this HA proxy. Um, you have a and that is done because you have a separation of the routing. Because the routing through the go route, a load balancer go router to the application to the service is not is a completely other route than through the HA proxy to their service instances. Um, Failover strategies we talked about, load balancing, you can have more than one uh, node behind one uh, port or IP address, uh, and uh, also what you can do is limit the uh, connections. If you provide a service with, a serv with, uh, with your service broker, um, you may want to uh, limit the number of connections. So you say you have a, a plan in your, in your service catalog which only provides five connections at the same time to your database. Because large-scale applications using 100 uh, uh, application instances may should be other treated like a service instance which is laying low. And then they should buy some other service instance which, which is uh, more capable of uh, handling this high traffic which is more expensive, and you want to push your users there, not by restriction, but by encouraging them. So you restrict the, the number of connections to the database. The HA proxy has some ACL rule for restricting the number of configurations. So instead of um, using the HA proxy for the service key management, you can also use it for the normal service binding management. 
So the uh, connection from your Cloud Foundry, uh, from your Cloud Foundry deployment of your app through the HA proxy to the database cluster can be managed by that. So you have, can use the uh, failover mechanisms and so on, and you can use the limitation of connections for providing a smaller service plan than may be possible there and uh, elsewhere. And like I told you, uh, connections between different private networks are possible in your company network. So you have a uh, HA proxy using, um, establishing this special connection, maybe. Because it's, he's in both networks, but nothing, no, uh, no one other. So, um, what alternatives are there for providing such uh, access from elsewhere? You have this, uh, this trick with CFSSH and port forwarding. Um, Cloud Foundry, if you, make a, if you have a user, you can log in with a CFCLI to the Cloud Foundry. You can use CFSSH to uh, jump into an application container. And from there on, you can use port forwarding without having to know about uh, a service key, uh, some SSH key. Because this is uh, uh, introduced by the CFCLI making an HTTPS connection to the co uh, CF co uh, Cloud Foundry controller. And from there on, the, you have an SSH connection. But the application, uh, the, the connection starts with the CFCLI installed. If you want to connect an application to your database, um, which is not homed in your Cloud Foundry uh, as a Cloud Foundry application, you don't. You have to install a CFCLI there, or you have to introduce some uh, uh, SSH key there, which is also installed on your service. But that's not possible on a public cloud. So there's a, some limitation. Um, also. Some, uh, there are Cloud Foundry installations. They regulate the um, SSA mechanism by disabling it because they see there are some uh, security issues, uh, like I've seen in the Volkswagen Group IT Cloud. And the connection you're doing is to localhost then, from your, uh, if you're, but that's the, the smallest problem. Um, the other possibility is having a virtual machine or container or something using as a jump host, um, which is more or less the same trick as above. Um, from there, you get the SSH port forwarding thing. But there, you don't have the limitations and so on. The, the constraints, you could do, uh, cannot do uh, limiting the um, number of connections and so on. Um, I told you about, we come back to the RabbitMQ uh, here. Um, we're working actually on uh, scaling the things a little bit up. Um, we, we taught about, uh, I told you about the um, thing with um, made from one network to another. Um, why not doing something like this? You have one service broker who wants something, goes to the service broker um, backend, and uh, then he, has, uh, he knows, OK, uh, if you want that connection, I have to go to, go to that uh, HA proxy, uh, c making a connection from there to there, then from there to there, and from there to there. And so you can uh, go through a whole pro proxy chain, which is in company networks really often uh, can be found. Or, or you want to do it because you have a failover system in your HA proxies. You have two HA proxies for failover. If one goes down, the other comes up. So you have to uh, incorporate both. Um, the last one is already there. The second one, we are working on it. Because it's, uh, you need to have some management of the proxy chain inside of the service broker backend because he has to know, it has to know uh, what is the proxy chain we want to go through. So the service broker uh, can ask for, open me that chain, not only open me that uh, the, that uh, HA proxy. Like I told, it's an, uh, uh, we have an frame, it's an open source framework for uh, developing uh, service brokers. Um, you can find us on GitHub, you can uh, contact us, we are happy for contributions. If you need uh, more uh, uh, 
more uh, support on it. You can also buy it, your company. <laughs> but uh, we're also happy for, uh, for the open source project here. Also, the HA proxy agent and the HA proxy backend is on GitHub. Um, so you can, uh, uh, they are getting in contact with us, uh, raising issues, bug fixing, making pull requests. Um, Help us with the docs. If you have tips for us, hey, look at that. That's a good idea. Uh, we're happy for it. So I hope you uh, got something out of my talk. And I'm open for questions. Um, there are two microphones there because we are recording. Um, please use it with, if you have questions now. As you can contact us via that. <laughs>